In this video, what we're going to do is explore some different types of compound events. Uh, the first type we're going to look at are what are referred to as mutually exclusive events. And uh, what mutually exclusive events are is it's a situation where you have more than one favorable outcome. But the catch with these favorable outcomes is that they cannot happen at the same time. So, so to help us understand this, what I've done here is I've drawn an imaginary drawer of socks. And so you can see that in this, in this drawer of socks, we have uh, one, two, three black socks, one, two, three, four, five red socks, and one, two, green socks. So in, in a way, this is kind of like a sample space because it shows all the possible outcomes if I were to reach into the drawer and pick a sock at random. So what makes this what, what could make this a mutually exclusive event is if I wanted to find the probability of pulling out a red or a green sock. And, and you've seen that word or before, we just didn't call it mutually exclusive events. Now, let's take a look and kind of see how both of these apply. There's more than one favorable outcome. It's not just about red color socks or green colored socks. If I take either one of those, that is a favorable outcome. And they cannot happen at the same time. I cannot reach in and pull out a sock that is both red and green at the same time. So this is now what is called a mutually exclusive event. To find the probability of this, really all I need to do is find the probability of getting a red sock and add to that the probability of getting a green sock. So a key thing here to remember for, uh, for future reference is that word or usually indicates that we're going to need to be adding some probabilities together later on. So let's, uh, let's actually kind of work this out now. The probability of getting a red sock is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 10 or 1 half and then the probability of getting a green sock is 1, 2 out of 10. So we can add those together and we can get that the probability of getting a red or a green sock is 7 out of 10. So we can use this situation to make a generalization about uh, mutually exclusive events. And, and it looks like this. Um, a mutually exclusive event is where you have the probability of event A or event B, whatever they happen to be. And what we say is that that is equal to the probability of event A plus the probability of event B. So this is sort of the key thing to remember for when we start exploring some different types of compound events. The second type of compound events we're going to look at are what are known as independent events. And these are a little bit different than the mutually exclusive events for a couple of different reasons. The first main difference is that independent events require the combination of two or more successful outcomes. The second key factor of independent events is that um, the outcome of one event does not influence the outcome of the next event. Now, the way that that actually occurs is by allowing for something called replacement. And so that this is actually the, the big thing that you do need to remember for this one. They allow for replacement. So let's look at our sort of imaginary sock drawer here and, uh, and see how this can be used to model independent events. L let's imagine a situation where uh, I'm trying to pick two black socks. Uh, I'm getting ready for work. And I pick up one black sock in the dark and then I accidentally drop it and then I want to pick up uh, another black sock. So what I'm, what I'm really trying to do is pick up a black sock. So I'm trying to find the probability of getting a black sock and a second black sock. But the key here is that because I dropped the first black sock back in, in, in essence what I've done is I've replaced it. So, you, so you'll see how this then leads to it not affecting the outcome of the second event. So let's look at how we would calculate this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probability of getting that first black sock and then I'm going to multiply it 
by the probability of getting the second black sock. And so just like how the word or led us to a uh, operation of addition, the word and indicates that we will be doing some multiplying. So let's, uh, let's apply that to this particular situation here. So in order to, to be successful in what I've just described, the first thing I have to be able to do is reach in and pull out a black sock. So the probability of doing that is 3 out of 10. Now remember, I dropped the sock back in, so for the second half of the event, there's still 10 socks in the drawer, and there's still three of them being black. So to find the combined probability of picking out the first black sock and then the second black sock, it's just 9 out of 100, or 9%. And just like in uh, mutually exclusive events, we can use this to make a generalization. And the generalization is that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of event A multiplied by the probability of event B. Uh, type of compound event we're going to look at are what are known as dependent events. And dependent events are really similar to independent events in that they're a combination of two or more events. But the key difference here is that the outcome of one event does affect the outcome of the second event. And, and the main reason why this happens is just like how independent events uh, allowed for replacement, in dependent events there is no replacement. So, there is no replacement. So the great thing about working out dependent events is that it's actually really similar to working out independent events with one little difference. So let's use the same problem as we did in the previous one, where we're going to try to find the probability of pulling out a black sock and another black sock. But uh, this time, because it's a dependent event, we're going to have no replacement, so I'm not going to drop the first sock back into the drawer. And that's going to make all the difference here. So because that word and is there, it's still the probability of the first black sock multiplied by the probability of the second black sock. So let's, let, let's now put some numbers in here. The probability of getting that first black sock is 3 out of 10. There are 10 socks in the drawer and 3 of them are black. But now, here's where the difference comes in. So let's uh, pretend that this is the sock that I chose, and it is now out of the drawer. So it doesn't exist for the second half of this event. So now, for when I go to pick the second black sock, there's only nine socks in the drawer, and two of them are black. So it changes the probability for the second black sock. And that's what we mean by the outcome of one event does affect the outcome of the second event. So let's kind of quickly work that out. One, five, one, three. And so we get a probability of one over 15, which is equal to 6.6 .6 repeating percent.